into another two atom. Um, so um, for uh, for this interacting theory, it's quite uh, it's impossible to get an analytical solution. So here uh, in code atom, we do a Bogolyubov approximation where we are considering that the momentum, the condensate wave function, which corresponds to the uh, k equal to zero, uh, should have a large occupation number. Uh, uh, therefore, we can substitute the ck and the ck dagger by the excuse me, we can substitute the C0 and the C0 dagger by the condensate wave function. And this is the spirit of the global approximation. And after that, mm. we can obtain this um, uh, decoupled mode Hamiltonian where the, uh, where the different momentum K are decoupled, uh, except we have the momentum K and the minus K that are still coupled together because they can scatter through the uh, um, uh, through the enhancement of the conden uh, condensate wave function. So, um, uh, so after approximation, this is the Hamiltonian we have. And N now, uh, and the, the theta here is the um, uh, uh, is the uh, order parameter for the condensate wave function, and the uh, and the wave function has the amplitude N now divided by V. So. Uh, this Hamiltonian is quite simple. Actually, in the content of the um, uh, of the quantum optics, this is the so-called two-mode uh, squeezing uh, two-mode squeezing model, where we have the where we have this two term as the Hamiltonian of the quantum harmonic oscillator uh, of the two quantum harmonic oscillator, and those term can uh, this dagger dagger and the C and the annihilation operator, those two annihilation operators serve as the um, squeezing operator for those two uh, for those two harmonic oscillators. So therefore, we can write the Hamiltonian, the decoupled Hamiltonian, into this version, where we have the cosine null uh, in front of k null and cosine one k one, cosine two k two, where the cosine null is the two mode uh, is the is the Hamiltonian for the for those two oscillators, and k one and k two are two squeezing operators. So uh, one can one can check that those three operators will satisfy the um, SU11 algebra, and uh, and actually this starting uh, this algebra should be the starting point for us to um, to give a geometric a, a geometrical representation of the um, of the quantum of the quantum dynamics in uh, in those modes. So um, as, as we mentioned before, the here we put the condensate wave function, the order parameter into this percent uh, percent zero, and uh, for this model we considered here the uh, the cosine null and the cosine one and cosine two are given uh, in those form. Okay. So um, is there any questions? What is S? Uh, S. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't mentioned this one yet. So. Uh, so uh, we have mentioned that the k naught, k one, and k two they satisfy the SU one algebra, and uh, so here uh, what I want to say that the uh, we have, uh, what we are familiar with is the uh, uh, SU two algebra where we have the commutative relation between the S one uh, between those three generators as a symmetric, uh, a cyclic symmetric, which means that if we move uh, one two and zero, the uh, the number is um, the sign is not changed. However, for this SU11 algebra, we should have a minus sign here. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, so then let me continue. Um, so uh, there is, uh, uh, actually for, for this kind of Hamiltonian, there is, um, a uh, very interesting observation in the laboratory, where, which uh, which is that if we set the if we set this interacting strength to be uh, negative, if, if it's positive, everything is stable. However, if we set the uh, the SV scattering length, uh, or equivalently uh, the uh, this interaction strength to be a negative number, then uh, there is uh, there will be a process so called the dynamical stability. Where the uh, where the number in the rest uh, where the number in the uh, different momentum mode will will grow exponentially and finally the condensate will disappear 
because uh, almost uh, because almost all particle in the condensate will be pumped into uh, those uh, those different momentum mode, and then the condensate will not be stable, and the Borg-Leibovitz so approximation uh, also will be not uh, applicable at such uh, at at such condition. So here we want to uh, we want to use a geometrical representation to give a, a give a much clearer point uh, a, a much clearer point of view for such a process. Um, to yeah, so to this extent, we are considering the so-called SU one one coherent state. Uh, this coherent state is defined by those two uh, two mode uh, eigenstates. Uh, two modes eigenstates for the quantum harmonic oscillator uh, in this form. So we should uh, we have this z to be a parameter which parameterizes a complex parameter which parameterizes this coherent state, and uh, and this uh, n states just represent there are how many boson uh, there are how many how many quanta in those um, in those uh, uh, in those two quantum harmonic oscillator. So if we are considering uh, sorry. If, Quick question. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. You you mentioned SU one comma one. Yeah, is that SL two R? Uh, it is. Uh, they are isometry. Uh, I think it's isom isomorphic to each other. So yeah, it's SL two R. Yeah, it's the same. I think thing. it's SP two R, right? I think it's SL two R. SL two R. Yeah. Yeah. It that, is. That's that's the isometry of ADS two. But anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. It, it should be the time slide of the ADS2, I think. Yeah, we are, we are going to mention it in- uh, I, I think in the it's a full slide. ADS2, but anyway. Mm. Okay, so, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, we just defined this as you one coherent state uh, uh, from, those, uh, from those eigenstates of the two mode uh, of this uh, two-mode quantum harmonic oscillator, and after the definition for uh, after the definition of this coherent state, uh, we can see that so actually any propagator, uh, if if we are considering a time-dependent uh, even if we are considering a time-dependent Hamiltonian, so here it means that if my scattering length is time-dependent, so if even if we are considering such a Hamiltonian, any propagator. Which is a time ordering product of the um, of the of this Hamiltonian will transform a coherent state into another coherent state, um, uh, which means that if we are considering a, a quinch dynamics starting from a, excuse me if we are considering the dynamics starting from a two mode vacuum, then at any given time, provided that the Hamiltonian is given in this form, uh, my state. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the state can always be described by a uh, by such a coherent state, which means that it uh, can be described by uh, this complex parameter z, and with a uh, um, with an extra phase, a uh, global phase, this e two i wafe. So this global phase is here because we know that uh, the quantum state will always has um, a trivial global phase showing up in, in front of it, and um, uh, and in, in another, so since we know that uh, this propagator, this propagator is generated by K0, K1, and K2, uh, this propagator belongs to the group of SU11. Uh, and uh, since this uh, global phase is not important, we, we should take the caution of this SU11 to U1 and give us, uh, and give us, um, uh, give us a space, uh, which is as a more, uh, so this space, um, this this space is uh, known in literature as a Poincaré disk, and uh, then we can claim that uh, the coherent state itself is parameterized by this Poincaré disk. Uh, uh, and the, Sorry, the dynamic. I'm, yeah, I'm very confused. So SL two R or what do you call, what do you calling SU one one? Yeah, is the symmetry of conformal quantum mechanics. Yes. Right. So are you claiming that this? Hamiltonian that you wrote in some sort of approximation has conformal symmetry. Uh, yes. So, uh, so what is that approximation? So th this approximation is a Borg-Leibovitz approximation, and this is the Hamiltonian we wrote down. So here the uh, 
Uh, actually, for the for the system which exhibit conformal symmetry, the conformal symmetry is generated by one of the. So here we have K naught, K one, and K two. So for such systems, the um, for for the system which has the conformal symmetry, the uh, the scaling transformation is generated by, uh, uh either K one or K two. Um, so uh, for the system here, uh, K one and K two will generate uh, two mode squeezing. Uh, which may not be uh, um, so. I, I mean, the symmetry in this system and the uh, the system which has the conformal symmetry are, are the same. Um, but sorry, sorry, maybe maybe I can ask you a question a little bit differently. The yeah. original Hamiltonian that you showed has scales in it, right? So that's not conformal quantum mechanics, right? Yeah. You took a limit which you're calling Bogolubi of approximation. What is the physics of that approximation? Somehow scales went away or something, something happened over there in that approximation that you're seeing some sort of a SL2R. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should claim, uh, say that. So here, uh, so first uh, let me uh, answer the question for the, uh, for the Bogolubov approximation. So, uh, so for the problem of approximation, where uh, the the approximation is simply substituting C zero and C zero dagger those two operators by a by a number, uh, which is the condensate wave function. So since we are assuming, uh, uh, so, I mean, for to be conformal, shouldn't the Hamiltonian be like K zero or something like that? I don't understand. Should be one of right. the generators I, 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 of the algebra. I think K0, if you only had K0, that would be conformal invariant. Uh, Nima, to your question on this slide, if you see the quantity N0 U tilde over V or something, uh, that sets a scale, uh, which is called actually sometimes Bogolubov momentum or whatever it's called, or healing length. It's the same story. So I think what Martin said uh, is. is first, so, yes. so, it's not like the, so it's not like the system has conformal symmetry. Right. It, it, I, my understanding that it would, if it were, if it didn't have k one or k two terms. That is, if the, the entire thing uh, with the the entire second term in the Hamiltonian on which we are looking were absent. I don't know if that's what Martin meant. Then the whole story would be just the uh, k zero. If I understand, I, I, I don't know if I understood the comment correctly. I mean, in the conformal algebra, the some generators are the momenta, and one of them is H. Right, so, right. Yeah, I guess that has yeah, to yeah, be, that's you know. exactly right, right. So I don't know, Nima, if I said something which you asked about, or I just said something. Yeah, I, 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 so basically you're saying that the limit that this becomes conformal is when U tilde, something happens to U tilde, it goes to zero? No. If it goes to zero, then you would have- sure. then it's, it's clearly conformal. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, this is, it's a trivial yeah. remark, yes. Uh, if, if, if it doesn't go to zero, then there is a length scale. I think your question was whether there is a length scale uh, again, if uh, U tilde is not equal to zero, the answer, as I understand it, that indeed there is a length scale. So here there is always in the Bogolubov theory, there is always a length scale, the so-called healing length. So in healing length, that's yeah. one word for, yeah, that's one terminal, yep. It has so it, when U tilde is non-zero, there is no SL2R, right? Not as a symmetry of the Hamiltonian, probably. But uh, the generators because... exist, I see, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. I think that's a fair way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the generators are still there. Okay. No matter you know what uh, you know on your theater U is. Okay. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. There's another relation. Well. Okay. So this is a one way to okay, write down this Hamiltonian. Basically, this is a standard of, uh, approach in condensed matter physics and uh, AMO physics. This is essentially essentially okay, AM code atoms one o one. Okay. But uh, often okay uh, in we can use a field theory approach. Basically, we one can integrate out of the density fluctuation, and then what remains is only the phase fluctuation. Then okay, we will see that it becomes a relativistic theory, and then the dispersion is also linear. So these two approaches actually are the same. So here we just adopt this Bogolyubov uh, okay, approximation. So I recall that Sergey recently has a paper, right? Okay, in that case, actually, I think you also consider the, okay, some kind of dynamical dependence of the interaction strains. 
but in that, if my memory is correct, uh, basically you have considered the phase fluctuation by integrating out uh, the okay, density fluctuation. Uh, you can do that, uh, and that's that's a possibility. Density and phase are uh, canonically conjugate uh, yes. mm -hmm. variables, so it's like integrating p when you let's say do functional integral path integral for mm -hmm. I don't know for an oscillator or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it it is uh, as long as u is non-zero, there is the crossover at a certain length scale from uh, linear dispersion to quadratic. That's right. Yes. And that is what you refer to as the healing length. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, what's the healing length again? It's like the size of a vortex or something? No. It is some, it, it, if, if there were vortices, right, more, more generally, I don't know if it's more general or not, it's uh, the length scale at, uh, or momentum scale at which uh, acoustic dispersion law, which is the linear one, crosses over to uh, k square to the non relativistic particle dispersion law, right? Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So, uh, uh, here we are just seeing the Cartesian state is parameterized by this s u one one divided by u one, and uh, so this can be considered as an analog of the uh, of the s u two Cartesian state, uh, which we are more familiar with, uh, um, as, and can be shown as a spin n, which pointing to a certain direction of the block sphere. So, uh, so here for the spin n, the algebra is the s u two and the and this sphere should be understood as SO2, uh, SU2 divided by U1. And the state is parameterized by theta and phi. Um, so here the minus N is a, is a ground state, is, a, uh, is a, uh, the magnetic quantum number equals to minus N state for the, uh, for the LZ. For the, uh, excuse me, for, uh, here we have uh, S0. So for the S0 operator, and then S plus is nothing but S one plus I uh, S two is a um, um, the it's a reasoning operator for the uh, magnetic angular momentum. So in this in this fashion we can define the uh, SU two Cartesian state. So uh, the definition here actually the definition here actually is equivalent to this operator uh, definition for the SU one one Cartesian state. Which is, uh, which is very similar to the SU2 one, but we substitute this minus N state by the two mode uh, two two ground states. And uh, we also replace the tangent by tang. So uh, for, for this kind of coherent state, instead of a sphere in a, in a Euclidean space time, uh, in a Euclidean space, so here this is the so-called uh, pseudo sphere, and uh, actually this is the upper sheet of the uh, hyperbolic. Um, so the lower sheet hyperbolic is not important here. Um, uh, actually, we can just view this Cartesian state as a the, the eta and the phi as a uh, as a as a parameters on this upper sheet of the hyperbolic. And the, the, here, the phi is the analog of the azimuthal uh, angle in the uh, for this uh, for this uh, for this three excuse me two sphere, and this eta. Uh, Will become the so-called rapidity in the content of special relativity. So, um, however, to put um, so for the uh, for the Cartesian state on a sphere, we can just put a dot here to represent our uh, to represent uh, put a dot on the block sphere to represent our Cartesian state. However, for the for this for this one, since the uh, hyperbolic is not compact. We cannot put uh, this into a finite region. Uh, a finite region on the, uh, uh, on a piece, for example, on a piece of paper, such that we need to uh, we map this uh, hyperbolic into the so-called Poincaré disk um, by this kind of mapping. Uh, so here, the tangent will take eta from uh, zero to infinity to zero to one, and uh, phi actually runs uh, runs from zero to two pi. Uh, as such, uh, th this z will be a parameter which lives on a, which lives on a unit disk. Um, yeah. So, 
uh, as I mentioned, the Z here becomes a unit disk, and here is a is a projection which uh, is this map and can be viewed as a projection as showing up here. So here we have the upper sheet of the hyperbolic, and uh, this uh, this this solid line should, uh, is an orbital which is generated by uh, which is generated by K one. So actually, it's a boost in the uh, as I said, it's a boost in the content of special relativity. So we can project this uh, uh, this trajectory and also this disk into the unit disk showing up here. Uh, and uh, here and this uh, and here is a projected trajectory for this boost. Um, uh, and this one is uh, is, gen uh, is is also generated by K one, um, but this time uh, on the concrete disk. So uh, uh, actually, the this uh, the, the generation uh, the excuse me the motion generated by K zero, K one, and K two can all be um, put on this concrete disk, where the K K zero is the rotation along the uh, along the axis which is perpendicular to the paper, and the K1 and K2 are, uh, are generator for the boost along, uh, uh, along this direction or along this direction. Uh, and we can, we can also adopt a good parameterization for this transformation, so-called the Mobius transformation, where if I give my Z as my initial state, so, um, so here this is the x-axis and here is the y-axis, and then Z is a complex number which equals to X plus IY, uh, which equals to X plus IY on this unit disk. So uh, the transformation then can be parameterized by alpha, beta, and uh, uh, the complex conjugate, beta star and alpha star. Well, we should have alpha square minus beta square equals to one. So uh, then, uh, then we can correlate the dynamics which is generated by the, uh, those, um, we can correlate the dynamics which is generated by the uh, SU11, uh, by the element in the SU11 group uh, to, the, uh, to the displacement of the coherent state which is, uh, which is parameterized by Z from one point to another point. Uh, and uh, this, um, uh, and this correlation is uh, represented by this uh, transformation. Um, so uh, under this representation, we should have K0 uh, equals to uh, the polymetric sigma Z divided by two, and K1 is minus, uh, is minus I sigma Y divided by two, and K2 is I sigma X divided by two. So the I showing up here uh, is, uh, is because here we have the SU1 algebra instead of SU2. And actually, the uh, so the main point I want to make is that on this um, concrete disk, the displacement of the uh, of the coherent state uh, can be uh, can be viewed as a, a, a two by two representation of the uh, of the SU one one group uh, on uh, using those poly matrices. Sorry, can I ask a question? I'm very confused about the geometry. Yeah. So you talk, you, so you, you're you're talking about SU11, which is yeah. SL2R, yeah. that's Lorentzian ADS2. Yes. Then you talk about the Poincaré disk, yeah. that is uh, Euclidean ADS2, and you're talking about the action of the generators, the symmetries of Lorentzian ADS2. I I'm very confused. Oh. How does SL2R? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure uh, what you mean by uh, the Lorentz ADS2 and uh, the uh, Euclidean ADS2. Poincaré disk. I mean, Euclidean, yeah. well, I mean, Poinc one of them is a group manifold for S SL2R. The other one is the group manifold for SO1, 2. I think, uh, I think SO. Two comma one. So here should be SO two comma one. One, one comma three. I think. I think. I'm, wait, sorry, I'm confused now. So two so here one. actually, uh, so here actually we are talking about the uh, SU one one, which is uh, isomorphic to uh, excuse me, homomorphic to uh, SO two comma one and SL two R. So uh, actually, you, you mentioned something earlier that I missed, which was you wanted to take SL two R and mod out by U one. 
What is that uh, U1 yeah. that you're modding out by? So this U1 is the U1 phase because we know that uh, actually when we are transforming a coherent state from one point to another, there should be a global phase accumulated. However, in order to parameterize this coherent state, this global phase is not important. So that's a reason we need to uh, so, model. So yeah. my, my question here is that, so if I look at SL2R, SU1 comma one, there yeah. are three generators. There's boost, there's dilatation, there are translations. All three of them are non-compact. What is it? What is the, what's the generator of U1 in terms of K0, K1 and K2? That's a question. So, so you said the, the generators for SL2R, the three generators are all non-compact, uh, non excuse me, non-compact. Yeah, it's one of them is dilatation, one of them is translations in the time direction, and the other one is boost. So uh, let, let's not worry about that. Let's say, so you have K0, K1, and K2. I'm yeah. asking what is what combination of these guys generates U1? I guess that will help me understand. Uh, actually, so uh, if you have, uh, uh, for simplicity, we can just consider my state to be the two-mode vacuum, which is located at, at the origin of this uh, concrete disk. So then in order to generate a U1 phase to this, um, uh, to generate a U1 phase for this state, we can just apply, we can just apply the, uh, the, group, uh, the group element, which is generated by K0 to, uh, uh, to this state. So uh, let me go to here. So since K0 is uh, one half C dagger C plus uh, C minus K dagger C, C minus K plus one, so, uh, and I'm considering my initial uh, my state as a two-mode vacuum. Then all those two terms has the value zero, but there is an extra one here. So then this term will generate a, a, a U1 phase to the uh, to the two uh, two-mode vacuum state. So Nima K naught here is already a generator for this U1. Okay, basically, well, you see, originally we needed to have three parameters, but okay, in but we to simplify the discussions, essentially, well, this global phase, uh, this global U1 phase is not important. Then we made use of this two-dimensional representation, okay, yeah, which is precisely the, this open upon Korea disk. So this is actually, uh, okay, basically somehow, okay, this is a uh, okay, uh, stand, standard technique uh, in quantum optics, this two-mode squeezing okay, state. Okay. But in high energy physics, we well we know that it's a so-called thermal field double state. These two things are actually identical. Okay, then so, so okay. what is the thermal field double? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think uh, uh, we will discuss it later. You see, essentially this SU1 SU1 coherent state. So typically we needed to make use of three parameters to parameterize this state. But it's just because of the, well, this global phase, uh, okay, this global U1 phase is, uh, is not important um, in many cases. Then that's the reason that, well, he just excluded this U1 phase at the moment. Then what remains is simply a two-dimensional okay, two, two parameter space, okay, this so-called upon Korea disk. I don't know whether or not we have answered the question, but okay, you, Directly related to your question, well, okay, the um, generator of this U1, no, of this U1 is precisely K0. Uh, uh, yeah, I, think I, I, I want to say something naive, like uh, you have this cone, I mean, in this picture, there is also a hyperboloid of one sheet outside the light cone, which I think is a Minkowski, but SO2,1 acts on both of the, on the one which is Euclidean and on the one which is Minkowski. So you can probably have some other coherent space on the hyperbola. I, I, I think that's what it is actually. I think that's what it is, Martin. Uh, I, okay, so maybe maybe we should continue. I think there is some interesting geometric interpretation of what you're saying in our language as well. But oh. this is this is very interesting. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So let me continue. Um, so previously we have uh, made this uh, parameterization of those uh, of those coherent state on this concrete disk. And then uh, we may, uh, similar to what, uh, what we did uh, on the block sphere, we may want to parameterize, uh, we, we may want to uh, evaluate some physical observable and uh, related them to the, uh, to the parameterization on this, uh, on this disk. So for example, we can, 
uh, we can correlate the average particle number in those um, in uh, in those um, momentum states to um, uh, to the parameter z. So actually, we have the particle number equals to the module of z divided by one mo one divided by module of z square. Excuse me, module of z square. Excuse me. Uh, and also, since uh, since this a uh, current state has this uh, specific form where we have a summation over n and the z to the power of n. Uh, and we also know that, um, let me see. So we also know that uh, if we are not considering this, uh, if we are not considering this two mode squeezing term, and if we are only considering this Hamiltonian uh, cosine no, k null, then uh, the energy in the energy in those different n, uh, the energy in those different n states are equally distributed. So, it's not equally uh, are equally spacing, uh, are equally spaced. So then, from 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 this, we can define a temperature to uh, to this state, and one can evaluate this temperature as the minus one half logarithm, uh, logarithm z to the inverse. So uh, this is uh, nothing but the uh, analog of we define the uh, the def we define the expectation value of the Lx and Lz and L uh, and L L L Y operator on this block sphere by cosine cosine theta sine phi etc. So uh, and we can always uh, we can also have the rotation uh, we can always have uh, we can also have the rotation operator. And the boost operator uh, um, uh, acting on this coherent state and serve as a rotation and a boost on this compressed disk. So uh, maybe I have one more comment to uh, to the uh, to a previous question. So uh, for the vacuum state, uh, the generate uh, generator for the U1 phase should be K null. However, uh, for if I'm considering a co a coherent here, so we know that uh, the the SU11 will generate uh, isometry on this concrete disk, and uh, and there is a generate and there is also a generator of rotating this concrete disk uh, along this point. So then, if we are considering a coherent state located here, the generator of rotation, um, the generator of re rotation with respect to this point will be the generator of U1 uh, phase uh, for this specific coherent state. Right. So, uh, any questions? Very good question. So, but this coherent state has to be generated by a specific propagator. Yes. Yes. Correct. So, for example, this one, is, uh, this coherent state, which has a large particle number inside of it, is generated by a boost along this direction. So, along this uh, yellow trajectory to here. Okay, so uh, so then we are, uh, then we use the uh, this picture to study the dynamics uh, to study the dynamics of the both anton condensates. So uh, actually, we are considering a queen. Uh, may I ask you something? Uh, the the generator K zero and especially regarding the comments that it is a like a U one symmetry, which I think yes. she she made. Isn't that again related maybe to Nima's question, the analog uh, of uh, the case when in ADS, for instance, they would consider time to be periodic sometimes for some purposes. Uh, uh, that, that there is the covering space where time is extended from minus infinity to plus infinity. But I'm wondering if U1, uh, if we're talking about the compact U1, isn't essentially a version of, uh, of, of periodic uh, of periodic time, that is the parameter phi zero uh, is, is parameter which has periodicity. Uh, I'm looking at the formulas on this slide. Is this somehow related to this, uh, the, the emergence of U1? Is it related to periodicity of time in, in, in ADS? Uh, sometimes used, some, sometimes discussed. Uh, 
I'm not sure the answer to this question yet. Uh -huh. uh, I just uh, maybe maybe it's it's just a, a, a random question. I don't no, know. I, I think you're right, Sergey. Actually, I think because uh, we do take usually the covering space that makes the time direction non-compact. Correct. Yes. And I think this phase they're talking about is time trans generated by time translations. Is, is 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 of that nature uh is of the nature yeah. of time right that k naught k naught is i think translation in time yes especially if we, we agree or i don't know if we agree or not but if conformal point corresponds to uh, hamiltonian being equal to k0 with all the other uh it's some kind of interesting non-relativistic conformal point maybe but i'm not sure how to uh, uh, to better say this but indeed uh, that would be uh, indication that k0 is time translation that that is exactly what i was thinking yes all right never mind i mean i, I it just occurred since we had all these discussions mm -hmm. i mean carry on okay. uh, so uh, maybe so in some sense we should be considering covering space of this uh, of this disk whatever it is i don't know if this notion makes space but sense but okay never mind i mean it's time translation in the so 2 comma 1 for sure no because it's k0 k1 k2 right uh, but then in the ideas on in the one seated hyperbola it would be time in this uh, So maybe maybe a, a related question, which might be easier to interpret physically, is that so you you showed this um, coherent state, right? What yes. is the operator that kills this coherent state? A uh, tilt kills it, like acting on this. It's a symmetry. What's what's the symmetry of this coherent state? The thing that leaves it invariant. Right. So as I said, the coherent the simplest coherent state is the zero zero. It, it's a two mode ground state. And, and then the, the symmetry that leaves this coherent state invariant. So for, for this zero zero state, it's k, k zero. Uh, however, if we, uh, if we, excuse me, if we put this coherent state from here to here, then the symmetry that leaves the coherent state uh, unchanged but give it an overall base factor is, is, is a rotation with respect to this point on this compact disk. So sorry. So uh, I'm I'm asking. So in your your coordinates, the boundary of the Poincaré disk is at what z? Uh, z, z equals to one. Uh, the the absolute. So that you're okay. Z equals zero is the center. It's the center. Yeah. I see. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So uh, then we uh, we study the quinch dynamics where uh, my initial state is located here, the two mode vacuum, and my Hamiltonian is, uh, is this one. So uh, we are considering, uh, in general, uh, a negative uh, U, uh, a scattering length, which means attractive interaction. So under this Hamiltonian, we have different, the, uh, different dynamics will be generated, and they are separated by this uh, parameter per side, uh, uh, whether it's uh, greater than zero or less than zero. So if the parameter, um, so we can consider some limiting case. So one is that the EK is very big, then uh, it, it corresponds to the stable region where the, where the coherent state will, uh, uh, will do this uh, circular motion uh, as showing up for this red or um, purple uh, for a uh, dashed line, uh, and uh, and if the uh, if the amplitude of this uh, if the cosine square is smaller than zero, which means that if the amplitude of this uh, two u is larger than the amplitude of um, of this term, then uh, then the system will be uh, uh, will will actually eventually reach the boundary of this complex disk. So also a specific case is that we should uh, is that we have the since here the u is negative, then if we are considering the mode where e k equals to the absolute value of this u, we should have the uh, we should have only this k one term showing up in my Hamiltonian, and this uh, this is this boost uh, uh, this is this straight line which boosts me uh, our coherent state from this point to the boundary of the disk. Uh, so here are some uh, 
uh, here are some, uh, are some dynamics for different um, for the same uh, for the same absolute value of u but different uk. So as one can see, uh, uh, here is a, uh, we have a simple observation, which is that the particle number in this um, rest uh, in this state, so uh, which we call the resonant state, uh, where the ek equals to the absolute value of u. So the particle number in this resonant state will grow the, the fastest. Well, for the for the other for the other state, the particle number will grow uh, uh, grows at slower uh, uh, slower than this resonant state. So, uh, so here is one observation, and this one is a uh, is geometrical correspondence on the uh, on the Ponga disk, and we also have uh, another observation. Uh, which is uh, uh, which corresponds to this uh, this graph. So in this graph, we can see that the resonant state, well, uh, um, uh, which has uh, which has the ek equal to the absolute value of u, uh, has the particle number grows the slowest instead of the fastest, um, comparing to those uh, those two trajectories. Um, uh, well, they all have the cosine square less than zero. So this is uh, this is the opposite result comparing to this graph. Uh, so the reason that uh, a different result is obtained is because in the second graph, instead of considering the dynamics where the where all the absolute value of u are the same, so here we are considering the so-called field strength, uh, which equal, uh, uh, which for this case for this Hamptonia it equals to the uh, this expression. So we are considering the dynamics for all the systems that have the same uh, that has the same field strength, um, and then the dynamics will show up. Uh, actually, uh, I mean the dynamics in the resonant mode show a different pattern uh, as we up in this figure. So, um, yeah, up to here it's just observation. And then I want to interpret those things using the uh, notion of complexity. So uh, yeah, is there any question to this one? Okay, so um, be, uh, yeah, before continuing, um, uh, let me give a brief introduction to the complexity. So uh, if we consider the unitary operator generated by the gate, um, by the gates, so am I here are considering are considered as different operators? So uh, then the unitary operators can be written as a time ordering product of this uh, of the uh, of the operator at different uh, at different times. So uh, and then from this uh, from this unitary operator we can define the cost function and this cost function will induce a metric on the space of the unitary operators. So um, taking a simplest example uh, where. Uh, which is that uh, we, are can, we are considering a quinch dynamics where ui um, is time independent, then the unitary operator should be written into this form. And then the cost function is nothing but uh, a, kind of, uh, a kind of field strength related to this um, gate, uh, related, uh, excuse me, relates to those uh, gate operators and uh, uh, multiplied, by, uh, multiplied by the time t. So uh, uh, and uh, the way that the uh, matrix can be induced from this cost function can be expressed uh, in, into this form, where we have the uh, the where we have the operator at different times to be represented by the partial u partial t times u inverse. Uh, this uh, the, uh, this inner product uh, can be expressed into into this form. And then the mat uh, the metric induced uh, can just be simplified into uh, this expression, where we have the uh, where we have this uh, this term and this term, uh, and and multiplied and multiplied by this uh, delta i j q i. So here q i can be uh, all positive one, well, which um, which means that uh, each gate have the uh, have the same cost. Uh, or we can have some Q to be a one or a negative one, 
which means that uh, some gates should have the negative cost to um, uh, to, e to evaluate our metric. Right, so uh, then uh, we want to show that uh, actually those two distinct uh, those two distinct behavior can be understood by considering the metric which is induced by uh, the metric which is induced by the complexity. So, uh, so first we can consider in the upper panel of the uh, of this uh, of this graph. Uh, where we are, con we are considering the quenched Hamiltonian, uh, the quenched Hamiltonian to be uh, the original one, and uh, actually we can show that uh, this quenched Hamiltonian can be decomposed, can be decomposed into this form, uh, where we have a uh, where we have a rotation and a boost, and and continued by a by a rotation uh, along the uh, along the k zero direction. So, uh, so then, to uh, to evaluate uh, to evaluate the metric to evaluate the metric which is given um, uh, given by this unitary operator. Okay. So. Uh, uh, this this unit operator actually give us a parametrization of the of, of the coherent state on this concrete disk. Um, so uh, and the parametrization is given by this i and the eta. So uh, then uh, given this parametrization of this uh, unit operators, uh, um, so. Uh, 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 we, are con uh, we are computing this complexity by setting the reference state as a two-mode vacuum, and uh, and the unitary operator as all uh, as all unitary operators, uh, which parametrized by this phi and eta, and then we are um, then we are uh, we need to define our cost function. So for uh, for fixed u, the cost function should be defined by the Q0 equals to zero and Q1 equals to one and Q2 also equals to one. Uh, the reason for Q0 equals to zero because uh, it's because that the U is fixed, but my EK can change the arbitrary, uh, can change the arbitrary layer. So uh, then uh, our observation is that if we define, uh, if we define the cost function to be some, uh, to be, uh, to be this form, and uh, and we consider and we consider the reference state as a two mode vacuum. We can evaluate a metric which is uh, written in this form, uh, and this is the metric. Uh, and this is the metric on the concrete disk. So uh, from uh, from this metric on the concrete disk, uh, we can conclude that although uh, although the trajectory although the trajectory are very different for different ek. Uh, uh, during this quenched dynamics, the length, if, if we want to measure the length of the of those trajectories using the metric on the concrete disk, the, uh, those, uh, those, uh, those trajectories should have the, uh, should all have the same length. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think maybe, uh, uh, is there any questions to um, um, to this part? So far, this is just observation, right? Okay. Essentially, you have the freedom to pick up whatever QI that you like. Uh, yeah, 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 correct. So the tabulation of the cost of function okay, is essentially a little bit arbitrary at the moment. But you are, what you are saying is that if I just pick up okay, this uh, choice of QI, mm. then okay, somehow okay, from okay, com the tabulation of complexity, you actually can extract um, the metric um, of, uh, you can obtain the metric of a Poincaré disk. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, actually, uh, actually, there is one more. Uh, there is one more reason for choosing QI uh, for for this quinch dynamics where we have constraint that the the absolute value of U is fixed. So the reason is because um, during the dynamics, the EK can be uh, uh, EK can be arbitrary. So uh, uh, since we are considering fix the absolute value of U. Uh, so uh, for this case, we should uh, we should choose the QI to be. Um, uh, uh, so if if we don't if we do not have this constraint, QI uh, QI can be arbitrarily chosen uh, chosen and different metric could be obtained. However, if we want to fix QI, uh, excuse me, if we want to fix the absolute value of U during the dynamics, then we choose the QI to be this form, and then we obtain the uh, the metric on the compact disk. So uh, yeah, with, with this choice, actually, uh, uh, as I said, we can make the conclusion. Uh, we can make the conclusion uh, that although those trajectories are very different, uh, the length, the length mirrored on the disk are, are the same. And then, since the length mirrored on the disk are, are the same, um, and the uh, and only this uh, resonant mode follow the shortest trajectory, uh, follow follow the shortest. A trajectory, because uh, because this one is a geodetic, then we can con conclude uh, uh, the the this resonant mode should have the particle number increase uh, increase the facet. And uh, another choice is to fix this cosine. So if this cosine is fixed, uh, this one corresponds to the QI, which is given by minus one one and one. So this one will induce another metric. Uh, which is uh, which is um, so for the isomorphic direction, which is the eta direction, they are the same. However, for the uh, excuse me, for the radial direction, they are the same. But for the isomorphic direction, the phi direction, uh, actually the cost function become uh, become negative, uh, due to a reason that we are choosing a negative cost function, which means that if we, if we add more operator following uh, following this form. Uh, the cost of the quantum circuit will become uh, smaller and smaller. So, so this uh, this this expression immediately tells us if um uh, if I'm following this uh, this trajectory, the length actually will be the longest. Uh, due to the reason that if I uh, if we, if I want to move along the asymptotic direction, it will uh, it will reduce my cost. So, but uh, usually, I thought this cost is how many operations in the quantum computer you have to make. So, what is a negative cost? Is uh, right. So, if uh, if I'm uh, if I'm so there are two definitions of the uh, of this uh, of this cost function. So, one is that if if I'm given a, a gate and I have applied the gate one by one. Then the cost is just the addition of those uh, of uh, of the number of the gate I applied. So uh, in that sense, we cannot have a we cannot have a negative gate to uh, to uh, to give us a negative cost function. But here, uh, the definition of the cost function is just uh, this expression. Then uh, then we are we are considering an integration. Uh, we are considering an integration of this. Um, uh, of, of this, um, so th this term should be, uh, be considered as a velocity at, at each time for this uh, uh, for this unitary operator. So then it, it just become a notion of how this how this u uh, y i will uh, will contribute to the cost function. If I have some y i, uh, uh, if I have some y i such that uh, uh, given this y i. Uh, the the contribution is negative, then we we see that the cost function uh, is contributed by a negative value for this uh, for this gate. Um, so here we are considering the uh, the y i the key not if it, so here we are considering uh, if the um, if uh, if the m i equals to k not then the y not has the uh, has the contribution which is the q not equals to minus one. So uh, uh, this uh, this give us the definition of the co uh, the cost function, uh, which can become negative in some segments. Uh, 
uh, in, in some cases. So, but then you lose the, the original meaning. So you want to think that this is also something interesting to compute or something like that. Uh, I mean, what's the philosophy behind this? Yeah, yeah. So if I use this one, I cannot, I cannot see the Euclidean uh, space. I cannot see the Euclidean metric. Uh, metric. However, from uh, from this metric, we are readily to. Uh, so we, we we want to use this metric to show that actually the uh, the trajectory which follow the geodesic, the trajectory which follow the radio direction will have the particle number growth the uh, the slowest. So this is the spirit for us to uh, to adopt this metric. Uh, the reason is because once I have my uh, coherent state move along this bad direction, the, the the cost function will be reduced. So so can I interpret this as uh, if I uh, have an initial state and then I want to go to another state on this Poincaré disk. I need to choose some kind of trajectory and then geometrically, you want to choose a trajectory that give you the shortest distance. That means the requires the minimal complexity to transport one, from one state to another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think it is, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little confused about the second geometry that you wrote down and has a different signature. That's why you're get, getting negative length, right? Yeah. So that's an, Clearly not Poincaré disk or anything. What is yeah, that yeah, geometry? Uh, this is not a Poincaré disk geometry. So what is it? Uh, so this this is just a geometry that show uh, that shows that uh, which shows that if I follow the radio direction, the um, if I follow the radio direction, the length will be longer than the uh, than the distance if I follow a, a trajectory. That's uh, uh, not only moving uh, along the radio direction, but also moving around the, the isomorphic direction. So, uh, so this is the interpretation of this uh, metric. But I, I, I do agree that this metric is not, it's not the uh, the metric of the Poincaré disk. But let me let me ask my question differently. Mm. What is the range of phi and eta? So uh, it, for, for this case, the, I think the range of the phi should be, uh, uh, I, I think even for this range, the, uh, for, for this case, the range of phi should run from minus infinity to infinity. And for eta, it should be from zero to infinity. Uh, the reason is because although phi, uh, although phi runs from zero to two pi, but if I'm continuing uh, rotating along this, if I'm continuing rotating along this direction, I should find my distance. Uh, uh, if there is a distance mirror along this direction, the distance will become longer and longer. So Nima, so we don't know uh, what exactly the second uh, geometry is. Okay, basically, well, the, this is a straightforward uh, result. Okay, once you pick up this, uh, particular choice of a QI, okay? So we don't know what is called, okay? But this is just the result, yes. But somehow if we pick up the answer QI, okay? Then, okay, the first Q, the, for the first choice of QI, then uh, magically, okay, the what's well, metric of our Poincaré disk uh, shows up. So we-, so, we Yeah, we so actually, even the first first one. So in the first one, for the first metric to be Poincaré disk, you need to identify phi has to be identified phi by phi plus two phi, right? Phi is a circle, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the second one, phi is still a circle, or uh, it, it, I think it's still a circle. Yeah, phi. I mean, this uh, as most angle is unaffected. Mm. So it's Actually, I think that the second one looks like AJS uh, two a bit because if I interpret it as time, uh, then the, the signature is okay. Let's call it right uh, because mm -hmm. it's temporal uh, piece has uh, the negative sign. It, it's similar. It, it maybe if you make a change of coordinates, you will see yeah. something uh, uh, along yeah. the lines maybe of AJS. Too, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, it has it has to close time like curves, right? Phi is the 
on this? Well, that, that is exactly what we were talked about, that if you think that phi is periodic, that's ADS with periodic time. But if you I look see. at the cover, covering mm -hmm. space uh, where phi is extended from minus infinity to plus infinity, then that's ADS with uh, mm -hmm. well, non periodic time. I'm not sure it's ADS, uh, that is. I mean, I didn't, it's kind of hard for me to make change of variables mm -hmm. right now uh, that would bring it to a standard form. Uh, but uh, uh, so for, for this metric, it should be a negative curvature, a, a constant negative a negative curvature space, uh, and with signature one minus one. Well, then that that would be ADS. I don't know how you yeah. see that. You see that instantly because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he did the calculation, but yeah. The signature, of course, yeah, you continue. can see, but mm -hmm. uh, whether this is a constant uh, curvature, I don't know. Is, it, is uh, this obvious? Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. not obvious. Uh, uh, if one do conclusion, uh, if one do calculation, the uh, the curvature is negative, uh, a constant negative. Uh, right? Well, then this is a yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is another one like that. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is a very good, uh, good point. So at that time, we didn't uh, thought about uh, replacing these files simply by time. <laughs> we were still thinking about, uh, you know, something in the, say, in the real space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, well, as, uh, as Chen Wei had just said, because, okay, well, in, qu in quantum optics, uh, well, okay, okay, basically, well, it's known that uh, this SU11 is essentially okay, identical to a punk disk. Then we were okay, thinking about a concrete disk, and then okay, we actually we then we asked okay what kind of cost function we needed to pick up. So then this is what uh, Chen Wei has found. Okay, before okay, before we did this simple exercise, to me okay, the choice of the cost function in the literature is a little bit arbitrary because uh, okay, it's still unclear to me. Yeah, whether or not the causal function, all these defined causal functions have any physical correspondence. Okay. But here at least uh, okay, we pick up one particular choice of the causal function. Okay, it's a okay, resultant, well, okay, it's a, well the, the, the geometry emerged from this choice of okay, causal function is indeed, uh, is, is indeed consistent with our naive expectation. Then we feel a little bit more comfortable about uh, okay, the, okay, this causal function, even though we still don't know whether or not the causal function itself has any physical correspondence uh, in, say, in experiments. Still, here the cost function is, like you say, is kind of pick up arbitrarily, right? There's a well. It's not ex, it's it's not complete arbitrary, right? So okay, what I mean is just the choice of QI. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think your in your imagination, usually it's like uh, each some gauge could be harder to apply than others, but the negative uh, then it changes the interpretation. I think. Yes. Okay. Probably. Then I believe that it's really related to say, okay, whether or not it is related to some energy cost okay, once you want to apply some gates <laughs> in reality. I, 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 I suspect that this, this, well, okay, the, this, this, this cost of function, eventually we may be able to relate it to really the energy cost. Okay. Some, real, some real numbers okay, that can be measured in, in the lab. So yeah. I have very, very uh, naive. I know you, what is C? Can you remind me again? Oh, uh, C is uh, defined by uh, this one. So we have the um, uh, we have the parameter between K naught to be this one, and between K one uh, in front of K one to be this one. And C here is defined by uh, this term square minus this term square. That, that, uh, so I know fixed U, but what's the difference between fixing C and fixing U? So uh, fix, uh, fix U means that we, can, we are considering, uh, for example, a, a, a single realization of the experiment where the scattering lengths are the same. 
uh, and then we are considering different uh, momentum modes, then uh, this corresponds to uh, fixing uh, U. But for uh, if we want to uh, fix C, then we need to considering maybe different run of experiments uh, where where um, where they all have the same. Uh, and we are also considering different modes, uh, but they all have the same uh, this pro uh, this product. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, how are you doing on time? Do you have many more uh, slides or something? Uh, no, uh, this is my, this is my fellow slide. I, I don't have any more. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me quickly finish uh, this part. So. Uh, so here, I, I, I just want to mention that in our original manuscript, we are only defined, uh, we are only defined the distance from the fidelity. So uh, this definition is quite straightforward since we are know, uh, since we know the Cohender state are located on at each point on this compact disk. Then we can just evaluate the overlap between the different Cohender states and, uh, next to each other. Then this overlap. Uh, turns out the difference between the overlap uh, uh, from one from the identity turns out to, to be um, also in this form. So this one is uh, is a metric on the compressed disk, uh, and yeah. So yeah, this is my final slide of the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I guess there was a lot of questions during the talk, but if somebody has questions, please uh, go ahead. So a long, quite some time ago, we discussed about uh, this result, and uh, I asked my student, okay, um, do you think we can kind of study some of the trajectories that you have calculated? Uh, one of the responses I got was, uh, the modes that you have is enormous. Like the number of modes that you can have like here in this graph is thousand. However, what we see in the experiment is like two, three. That's it. You mean the so, momentum mode that can be observed, uh, which have uh, which yeah, have because because for example, if we go, uh, go to negative interaction. Um, before we reach say population 10, I guess this and uh, the entire cloud is already very unstable. Yeah. So, sorry, I don't know. I, I didn't get your, uh, your information. What do you mean by thousand mode? No, the modes that we have. So for example, if we go to negative interaction, we create instability. Um, well, it, it depends So in, in this particular case, in our case, we kind of induce this instability in a very broad band. Uh, perhaps if you uh, modulate the interaction, it's slightly better. So you only create instability in one of the modes. But in our case, we quench to a negative interaction. The instability is very broad band. So the, uh, along all possible, the older and stable case, we start to grow uh, all these modes. Well, and that's true. K is continuous here, right? So you, you do have a okay, final window in which all this momentum will become unstable. This yeah. is precisely the population of the unstable mode. Okay. Yeah. And, and so very quite quickly before the concept even has a chance to uh, give you say 10 modes per in some case. And I think the concept is already fragment. Okay, most you mean, so you are really talking about a population. Okay. Yes, population, yes, population. Population at a given K. Yeah. So you are saying that, um, okay, so, okay, be, so, so you are saying that the, exp the exponential growth in a given K is um, not clear, okay, it's not, it, well, it's not significant before it's condensate uh, somehow is gone. Because we have finite condensate number in your theory, you don't have to worry about it. That's true. So this theory only works in shorter times. So, but the question is whether or not there's still time window in which okay, the condensate 
is still uh, there. Okay, so your, your cloud, uh, well, okay, your atomic cloud uh, does not disappear yet. Okay, but you still have the visibility to see that uh, ah, indeed, indeed within this uh, okay, small time window, okay, the occupation at some case, okay, it has already increased exponentially. Yeah, so I, I want to comment a little bit. Maybe this graph is misleading since the particle number seems to be uh, to grow into like thousand or 10,000. But actually, for example, this point, uh, actually this point uh, uh, on the disk. Uh, um, so for this point, uh, it only has the uh, particle number two. So yeah, yeah. yeah for, for the visualization on this disk, the particle number actually is not quite, uh, it's not quite big. So th this finite trajectory is kind of corresponding to the kind of, uh, we, we call it saccharization, but it is really just uh, the, the, the um, coherent modes being quenched out and, and kind of interfere and then grow, look like bigger and then come back down to small and big and small. So, I mean, even for this blue, uh, this blue one, so um, uh, as long as we are not considering it propagated to somewhere here, so if, if it just propagated to somewhere here, the particle number should not be uh, very large. So, um, uh, it's possible, I, I don't know whether it, it's possible, maybe the the time the time window be uh, the time window between the particle actually uh, the coherent state propagated to here um, to the time that the coherent state propagated to here is is too short such that uh, such that the, the dynamic cannot be controlled during this time scale. If we are just looking at uh, 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 populating a few excitations, and yes, it, yes, we can. I think. That will be enough. I think, well, basically, okay, in, in case you can okay, distinguish uh, basically exponential growth and a bounded uh, oscillation, I think that will be more than enough. Okay, say, you, as you know, okay, basically this uh, dynamic instability occurs only in the final window. Yeah, so so that that's actually that's actually uh, one thing probably is I, I I would say it's kind of difficult because uh -huh. you know that we try to measure so in one experiment we quench the negative interaction and wait until the condenser is completely fragmented, and then so we saw that the power spectrum grow and and then at some point still decrease, but it's a kind of a sharp turn, it's like uh, going up and then sharp turn down. So when it's sharply turned down, that's when when the condensate fragments. In another case where uh, it, if it is just oscillating, then it's more like a sinusoidal oscillation. It go like sine square. And another one is like sinh square, like you have here. And so for That's short right. time, sinh, sinh square and sine square is difficult to tell. You, you wouldn't tell until you wait for long enough time. If it is sine square, then the, the, the fluctuation will come back down. But if it is sinh square, then eventually it breaks in our case. Yes, I think this is precisely okay, what the theory shows. So okay, now okay, okay, they call it basically this, well, okay, in, in somehow, well, this phenomenon okay, has become also interesting to okay, people working on quantum information and the class matter of physics. So the well related to this periodic driving, well, this they call it uh, this what, okay, long heated phase, uh, heated phase. Okay. But it's essentially is exact, is exactly the same thing as a uh, dynamic instability. Okay. Our community has been talking about for decades. So I just hope that, uh, okay, in experiments uh, we may have clear resolution in both the momentum scale and in the in the time domain, such that one can really visualize it directly. So what you're saying is that, for example, we quench the negative interaction, quench it back, quench the negative interaction, quench it back, and then somehow will not see a unbounded growth of uh, 
full normal, but instead we saw, you know, some kind of oscillation, but it's kind of on the trajectory. So it kind of depend, depend on case, so some case will oscillate and some yeah. case will be unbounded. Yeah, the, the thing is in our kind of a global quench, it's a, it's a range of K become unstable and then come back and then come. And so there could be some modes are uh, non, some modes are stable, some modes are unstable. So that's certainly true, yes. So okay, this is precisely what I hope because in your experiment, uh, you have the, you can access all these different uh, uh, modes, uh, okay, okay, either stable or unstable simultaneously. So I'm wondering whether or not this is doable in experiments. Yeah, well, yeah I do agree that you have a lot of modes. Yeah. Some of them are stable, some of them are some un unstable. But you do have the okay, resolution, you, but you know how to distinguish different momentum, right? Then presumably I imagine that you will be able to see all these modes, no matter whether or not they are stable or unstable. Yeah, so we, we, we just did a, an experiment that quench negative and quench back, right? So, uh, 